Hello my viewers, welcome back to the channel. By the video title, you know what this video is about. We're diving into some of the top free agents that are still left in free agency in the NFL. As you guys know, the, the um, draft is like yeah, April the 25th. So the draft is actually coming up pretty fast. So we're gonna um, see if some of these guys get picked up. Some of these guys are older veteran guys and some of these guys are guys who are still in their prime who are still available on you know the market. So I guess they're just trying to find the best deal possible. You know, some people like to wait till like close to the end to find the best deal possible. And then they make their decision before training camp starts. So some of these guys, like a guy like Ryan Tannehill, who's probably the only quarterback you can really look at. Some other guys are quarterbacks who could probably be backup guys, the veteran guys to lead and help a young quarterback who's coming in. Ryan Tannehill could be a guy, you know, on somebody's team. I'm surprised the Titans didn't decide to bring him back, you know, but Ryan Tannehill history of not being able to, you know, go out there and, you know, like give back and give knowledge to some of the quarterbacks. Remember he said to Malik Willis, and then Will Levis, he helped him a little bit because he had no choice, kind of, but I don't know, maybe, that, maybe that's the reason why the Titans decided to part ways with him fully. Uh, so he's still available on the market. Uh, another guy who's available in the running back rooms, you know, Zeke Elliott, another guy's available, who did a pretty solid job with the Patriots last season. I think um, the Cowboys made a mistake in getting rid of him because when he got, they got rid of him, it kind of messed Tony Pollard up a little bit. Tony Pollard is not a all-purpose type of back. Ezekiel Elliott was the, the ground and pound type like that. And Tony Pollard was supposed to be the change of pace type. It's like, as you guys know, I'm Steelers fans, you can see probably from the stuff on the back wall. Um, Najee Harris and Jalen Warren, it's a great combination. But I don't know some fans were saying, get rid of Najee Harris and just get Warren out there. Warren's not going to be able to sustain all those hits and all that punishment of being a bell cow back. But Najee Harris can. But having both of those guys at the same time is always great because you can do a change of pace. When guy, when you're setting them up for certain schemes and like you know, Najee Harris being the guy who's getting those touches now like, and those carries, those handoffs, 20 plus carries, and Jalen Warren can come in and just scoop and do what he, what he do like on the outside, you know, the pitches to the outside and the screen passes and different things and gets touched in different ways. So, so not all running backs are meant to be, you know, straight downhill guys like Derrick Henry, like a Najee Harris, like a Josh Jacobs type. You know, some guys are a little different. I have a Kamara never rush for a thousand yards for a reason. It's not his play style. His play style is to be dual threat. So the Cowboys, when they had Zeke Elliott and they had Tony Pollard, it was a, a great one-two punch. I think Zeke Elliott had about, what, 13 rushing touchdowns that year? 13 or 14 rushing touchdowns that year at 800 plus yards rushing. But the Cowboys wanted to get rid of him. They could have really e easily restructured his contract and just brought him back, but they wanted to get rid of him. Got rid of him, put Tony Pollard out there and their rushing attack decreased a lot. So we're gonna see what they do this time, but I think Zeke Elliott is a guy who's still available. He's 28 years old, um, still pretty good runner, can go, go out there and get some tough yardage for you. I think he could be a nice addition for anybody team as a one-two punch. Um, Boston Scott, another guy available too. He's 28 as well. Boston Scott, of course, is one of those gadget-like players. You can put him in different spots, you know, screen passes and different things and different ways to use him on the outside. Um, there's a guy available, he probably found a home. Damian Harris, another running back too as well. Played for the Patriots a little bit, they went to the Bills. Um, now the injuries kind of plagued him a little bit, but he's still a solid running back, you know, out of Alabama. Then Cam Akers is still available. And what's crazy about Cam Akers, he's only 24 years old. I think he's turning 25 in a little bit. He's only 24 years old, which is crazy. Um, I feel like he'd been, he had experienced so much, you know, with the Rams, remember that when you came back after the Achilles tear or the ACL tear that he had, came back in the season, and then you see him um, go out there and play and perform. Have, was very promising his rookie season, but then eventually got to a, a stagnant point where he wasn't running the way he the people thought he was going to run, got traded, uh, eventually went to the Vikings, and he did pretty solid with the Vikings, but got injured there too as well. So he probably found a home in the spot, but he's just very young, but a lot of injuries has plagued him a little bit. Um, remember Ty Gurley? Now, he's not Ty Gurley, of course. Ty Gurley was on a different level. Ty Gurley was probably one of the best athletes we've seen in the game of football, and I think Ty Gurley, only, he just stopped turning 30, I think. It was 29 or 30. It was just crazy because Ty Gurley, in his career, what, 26, 27? But his knees, is just the knees. Like, it was just deteriorating uh, over and over. And, like, and he just couldn't hold up. But you look at his numbers. The man was an absolute beast. Absolute beast. Imagine him um, being healthy and, and they have the knee issues that he had. Man, he would have finished as one of the greatest, one of the best running back, one of the best running backs of all time. His dual threat ability, his speed, his burst was just crazy. Another guy on his list, J.K. Dobbins, who dealt with injuries too, the Ravens. The Ravens had a promising backfield with J.K. Dobbins. They had Gus Edwards, but the injuries kept piling up. Back-to-back -back years getting injured and getting season, not just like regular injuries, like, where like he's out for a few games, but season ending injuries. So they went out there and got Derrick Henry now in the backfield. J.K. Dobbins is a free agent now. He probably find a home somewhere. But he got to stay healthy. Kareem Hunt's another guy who's available too. I think the Browns might probably bring him back, but we'll see what happens. But he's an available guy. He could be a guy. Remember Kareem Hunt when he first came to the league? He was amazing. That big game he had against the Patriots. Went out there and put up 180 scrimmage yards, you know, a few touchdowns as well. He was an amazing player. But the Chiefs, he was untouchable. Amazing player. Him and Patrick Mahomes was a great combination, but he messed himself up with um 
um, was he had some type of he had some type of crazy incident that happened. He attacked somebody. I forgot, I forgot what happened. I know he did something crazy. It was something crazy that happened, and um, Kareem messed himself up and got released and stuff, and then went to the Cleveland Browns, which is his hometown team, and he's been pretty solid there. He hasn't been the same Kareem Hunt that he once was because he was in a starting role, but he's been solid there, and he's, he's a little different now, but maybe he'll find a spot somewhere, and we'll see how it goes. Some of the receivers that are left in his um, free agency, you got Hunter Renfro. Hunter Renfro is a you know, amazing route runner. Amazing route runner, greedy player, tough player. He was a Pro Bowl player a few years ago with 100 catches and 1,000 yards, so we know he can do that and go out there and perform, but the I think the Raiders didn't use him right. Joshua Daniels did not use him right. They utilized him right. So he kind of got pitched in the back a little bit. And you had Devontae Adams, you know, came over there, of course. And then Jacoby Myers, another guy who's very good, came over there too. And he got pushed to the third and kind of pushed to fourth. So now he's a free agent. I think on the right team, a contending team, he'd probably be good. Maybe the Bills. Maybe the Bills. You know, the Bills probably a draft a receiver most likely. Uh, I think Brian Thomas Jr. should be there at 28 for them, but you never know. They might have to trade up. Barring what the Cowboys do, because the Cowboys could take a receiver to replace Gallup. I think the Cowboys more like, most likely going to the offensive side. I mean, offensive line, um, but you never know what could happen. Some teams are very offensive minded, you know, and score hungry, so they might go out there and just say, look at that receiver to add out there. So if, that, if he does fall and slip down to the Bills at 28, unless the Bills got to trade up a little bit, I think that would be good. And you have a Hunter Renfro adding the other side as well. And that could be a nice little receiver duo right there. So. The Bills could be a good team for him. Um, Odell Beckham, another guy available too as well. Odell Beckham, as you guys know, Odell Beckham is a good player. Um, I know he um, not the same Odell he once was, but he's still capable of being a, a good number two, a good number three type of a receiver to go out there to help you. Um, so we'll see where he lands. Most likely a contending team because he's trying to win a championship, most likely. You know, you get to the stage of career. He already won one with the Rams, of course, but when you get to the stage of your career, you're not really chasing. Well, sometimes you're chasing the money a little bit, but sometimes you're like looking like a, a both type of like spectrum. It's trying to be still in the limelight, give yourself opportunities so you can just keep extending your career, but also, you know, try to um make some good money as well. Oh, Gallup, another guy too, if he stay healthy, he can be gonna be back to being good, but he just has to stay healthy. Tyler Boyd, another player too is available. He probably could be a guy who, who gets to a, a continuing team, so we'll see where he lands. Um, some of the offensive linemen, you know, Bacciari is still available. You got um, Thomason still available. Leno, Andre Dillard still available. Some guys who are solid pieces. Bacciari, um, he's a good player, but he just the injuries that got to him. That's why the Packers have to kind of move on a little bit. Sometimes that's also that's something that plague a lot of players, like Tyron Smith. He's on the Jets now, but the Cowboys, you know, love Tyron Smith. He's a very good player, a phenomenal player. But it's just the injuries, like they, they keep plaguing him, and then the, the wrong time too. And you know, trying to pay a big contract, but he's missing a lot of games. It's like ah. So I think about Tyron find a different spot, but he's got to stay healthy. And Ethan Gakwe is a guy who's available still, another edge rusher. Clay's Campbell. Still available. I know he's a veteran. He's 37 years old, but he had six and a half sacks last year. He showed you that he can still go out there and be a rotational piece and be a good depth piece. I think he's a future Hall of Famer. You know, three-time pro, um, pro, uh, all pro, um, first, one first team, two second teams. He um, was six-time Pro Bowler, all the paid man of the year, uh, over 100 plus sacks as well on the All Decades team. I always say if you make the All Decades team, you gotta be considered the Hall of Fame. I ain't saying your first ballot Hall of Famer, but you gotta at least be considered to be in the Hall of Fame. With his first ballot, with his first ballot, if you really, really like that or second ballot, but you gotta be a Hall of Famer. Cause if you dominated for that long to be considered the best player of the decade, then you gotta be up there. So Clayus Campbell, I think is a future Hall of Famer, amazing player. I think I, I think he got enough bursts left. I think he's just trying to uh, find a way to get a championship. So he most likely he might go to contender on the ad, a championship to his resume, but he's done a lot. Remember the mayor of Saxonville, he was in Jacksonville Jaguars, and then the Falcon stuff was cool too as well. But he's a um, good player, had a great career. So I think he ended off in the um, contending team. Uh, Xavier Howard, cornerback still available. A good player, as you guys know, to play man-to-man -man covers. Now, last year, he kind of struggled a little bit because the injuries got to him. Most of these guys in free agency are just the injuries concern. Most of, you know, some of the stuff not even production. But um, some of the guys are production, but most of them are just injury concerns. It's like, it was good players. Like, the Bayern Dolphins wouldn't mind, wouldn't mind keeping his Amy Howard, but the contract and him being injured a uh, lot. And yeah, I paid two or two as well, so he kind of got to free up some money, free up some cap space. So, Xavier Howard got released. But I think he's a good player. I think he'll find a home before training camp. Most likely, after the draft, usually some of these guys, um, they're either close to the draft or after the draft, they'll find a spot and then enter training camp with the new team. J.C. Jackson, other guy too. The Patriots traded for J.C. Jackson, which is crazy. Then they released him. So, I, I don't know if they did that so they can like, clear up some cap space because they knew his contract was be able to release and save some money or something. But... Jesse Jackson was the guy who was on the Patriots who played phenomenal with the Patriots, got to the Chargers, and um, the Chargers um, paid him a lot of money, and then he just didn't pan out with the Chargers and got back to um, the Patriots via trade, and now he's back he'll be in a free agent. So he might could come back to the Patriots on a cheaper deal. They got Christian Gonzalez there, who's an amazing player 
Uh, I know he had some injuries last year, but when he played, he was very good in college. He was very good at Oregon. Um, but I think um, most likely J.C. Jackson should find a home. He's like, what, 20, like 27 or something. So he's not really that old either. Um, still in his prime. Has had a little down years with the Chargers, but I think he could bounce back. Adore Jackson, another solid um, cornerback as well available. Cameron Sutton is available. You know, the Steelers, he was very good. He was good, good player with the Steelers. Good with the Do Lions too as well, but I don't know if a lot of teams are going to be lined up at his door to get him because after the incident that happened, I think he like had some type of domestic abuse issue where he attacked, uh, I, think, I don't know if it's his girlfriend or his wife, and then he went on the run for the police or something that happened. He went on the run for the police and then the Lions released him, so... I don't know if he's going to be on a different team or not. I don't know what's going to happen the situation because a lot of people are like, hey, I don't want to touch that situation and what's going on because he's probably going to have to get, go through trial and yeah, see all the things. So he might not be playing this year or maybe maybe next year or maybe never. So we'll see what happens with that situation. Um, good, good player, good talent, but you got to be not only good on the field, but off the field. You can't, like, like I, don't know, I know people make mistakes. You know, people make mistakes. You know, everybody's human and stuff, but... You gotta hold yourself to a certain standard. You know, I think he's on um, 28 years old, almost 30 years old. You gotta hold yourself to a certain standard and be like, okay, uh, uh, off the field, I'm gonna, I'm gonna conduct myself properly, and on the field, I'm gonna do the same thing. So, uh, we'll see what happens. Stephon Gilmore, oh, another guy available too, a veteran on um, presence. Had a little down year with the Cowboys, a little bit, but he's still a guy who can go out there and be your number two um, um, cornerback and be solid. You know, former defensive player of the year as well. So he's available. Michael Hyde is available. Safety. Patrick Peterson. Is a cornerback, but he he for the Steelers last year he played a lot of safety, so I think he might be trying to transition to safety. He did mention that a lot of his um his podcast show that he has um with McFadden, so he might he might um, transition back to being um a transition to being a safety to, um, for the longest career. So we'll see what happens. Jamal Adams was a surprise to me. He's still available too. He's a guy who's a thumper, you know, old school type of safety coming down field to lay you out. I think he'll find a home. Justin Simmons, another surprising one too, who's still available in free agency. Most likely some of these guys will probably find a home, like I mentioned earlier in the video, probably after the draft, but it's still crazy that Simmons is just sitting there. And then um, Eddie Jackson, another guy too from the Bears. And then Con um, Condre Diggs is another guy too. So it's a lot of different um, free agencies. These are some of the ones I saw and thought that could possibly be a guy you can add to any team that maybe be some, a depth piece or maybe be a guy who can help you over the edge, like a Justin Simmons or Micah Hyde or Jamal Adams or Xavier Howard, one of these players to bring to bring in. So we'll see what happens in free agency and we'll see uh, what happens. Also, T. Higgins, he's not a free agent, but I think the, I think the Bengals franchise tagged him. And I know they said, um, I think T. Higgins can't, they want him to get franchise tagged. So they could be looking for a trade partner as well. So we could see something crazy happen. You know, it could be a big trade. I know the um, the draft coming up, and we see some crazy dra um, trades happen in the draft before. Remember AJ Brown, um, get traded from the Titans to the Eagles in the, during the draft, and we see like all, all type of things that be happening. So we could see a big trade, um, happen with T Higgins. I bet um, the Vikings are going to make uh, some moves. I know they got Justin Jefferson, but they can make a trade up to try to get a better quarterback if they wanted to trade up all the way from the bottom all the way up. You never know what could happen. What teams would do to try to get themselves over that hump. And the Vikings got a great offense. Defense is solid. But you got to have that quarterback. That, that missing piece right there. So we can see a lot of different scenarios happening before the draft. I'm going to keep the covers going on. Uh, as you guys know, I'm also going to have the covers on basketball as well. There's three more games left. I think three or four games left in um, the basketball season. I'm going to do a play-in preview. So on the play-in games, and then the playoffs start, we do a playoff preview, and then I'm going to be doing reviews on all the Heat games. Of course, I'm a Heat fan. But also, I'm going to do reviews on other games as well, the other NBA games that goes on. So be look out for that. And then college football is going to start up, I think, in a few in a few months too as well. You know, you're already doing the training and stuff. It'll we'll start in a few months. And then the NFL draft is this month. So we have a lot of different content coming. So just stay tuned for more content. And I hope you guys enjoyed the videos. If you did, leave a like and subscribe. You know, share it. Do what you got to do. And I'll see you guys next time on the channel. Peace out.